Good morning, everyone. This is a much anticipated interview with the author and anthroposophist Ari Torreson, who's joining us from Norway. Um, I think his work is very, very relevant to those of us in recovery from addiction from a variety of angles. So in order to unpack this, we have to maybe get a little bit more into Ari's work. He's an acupuncturist, a veterinarian, and he's been healing in various modalities for, I would imagine, most of his life. So Ari, could you just paint a little picture of how you came to understand that healing, uh, most healing is really what you call translocation. Yes, I will tell how this started, right? <clears throat> and um, well, this more understanding of disease started, of course, when I started treating patients as I uh, parallel educated myself as a, a homeopath and acupuncturist and a veterinarian. I did this quite parallel and also uh, into anthroposophic medicine. So what was interesting to observe <clears throat> was that all animals and when I say all, I mean 99% had the same problem as their owners. And this problem started about six weeks after uh, they were bought or uh, got together with the owner. Let's say uh, the owner had a, a heart problem. Then the dog after six weeks or cow or sheep or cat or whatever, the animals connected with that particular human, they within six weeks got the same heart deficiency, the same heart, I, I call it by the, for the time being a uh, problem. So I wondered then for a long time why they got the same problem. And I also must add, this is not symptomatically. For example, if a man has a heart problem, he can have certain problems with psychological problems, with, uh, uh, with uh, internal problems, with blood circulation problems. While the dog, when it has a heart problem, it often reacts with scratching, eczema, uh, behavioral problems, depression. A horse will react with uh, lameness. A cow would react with mastitis and so on and so on. So you cannot, I'm not talking about the symptoms as such, I'm talking about the deeper course. Mm -hmm. And then I, in the beginning, thought that hmm, this is because of some sort of influence from the owner, that the dog or the animal got the same. But then I realized and I started to look spiritually as I most of my life had the certain gift of clairvoyance. Then I saw that this influence actually translocated from the owner to the animal. It actually jumped over. And that, ha that happened actually very swiftly. Uh, that started to make me aware that if it could jump over, then it wasn't actually a disease as most doctors or veterinarians uh, think it is. It is a the presence of an entity, a spiritual entity. And 
for years, I then treated this problem with different means, anthroposophic medicine, with acupuncture, with homeopathy, with herbs, and so on. And I became more and more aware that these entities, when treated, they just jump further. They translocate to others, other animals, other humans, and so on. Uh, parallel to that, I, when you see you start to really see something in the spiritual, this view get in a way better and better. So we see it more and more clearly. So I saw that also when people used drugs or medicines or alcohol, that the effect came from the presence of spiritual entities. Now, are the spirit entities the spirit entities of the drug, of the plant? Yes. Yes. It can be from the drug, from the plant, but it can also, and uh, first time I saw that was I was in the Spain with a friend of mine who I didn't actually know he was an alcoholic. But when we sat at the hotel and he took this glass with this this uh, sort of alcoholic <laughs> mind, there came a, a man from above and went into him and he changed character. This was actually a, a deceased person who wanted to experience the alcoholic experience, experience the alcohol. So you might say there you can both the alcohol and a deceased spirit. And in drugs, you can have both the plant and other spirits that are associated with the drugs, even deceased uh, spirits that want to experience the drug. So uh, what translocate or incarnate might be a multitude of different aspects of the spiritual world or forces or entities or elemental beings or deceased spirit. Uh, so just for the sake of our audience, anthroposophy talks about there being two or three different types of entities or demonic beings, the luciferic, the arimonic and the asuric. Could you just describe those briefly for our audience? <clears throat> well, I must first say that, let's say you describe humanity to say there are three kinds of humans. There are males, there are females and children. But, and then you say, can you describe a human male? <laughs> and it is, they can be uh, black skinned, white skinned, they can have long hair, short hair, they can be big noses, small noses, you know. There are so many variations of these entities. But you might actually say that the Luciferic entities have a certain, uh, they want to go into your um, astral, your soul, your feeling. The Arimanic entities, they want to go into your, your life forces, sort of deeper. So a Luciferic entity can give rage, can give jealousy, sudden wanting to kill somebody or hurt somebody. The Arimanic entities, they damage, for example, the life forces of the liver or the kidney or, or, or like that. And then you have the Asuric entities, which is very difficult to see, to spot, because they are sort of formless in a way. The Luciferic are very 
formed. The Arimanic is not that formed and the Assyric is much less formed. And they attack what is called the spirituality or the morality or the I function of the of the entity that is possessed by such a spirit. So for example, in um, let's say you can take cocaine, cocaine, it works on the astral or for example, LSD, that is uh, Luciferic entities. If you take things that destroy like heroin, they go on the Arimanic, they really destroy the, the life forces. And then you have the Asuric, which is not so much watched until now, their presence have become stronger just lately. And they are more like destroying the self of people, the, the I function, who they are, which is actually the most dangerous. In my work, I have noticed that my clients, especially younger men, millennial men, are presenting very differently now. They come and they are, um, they're, they, they, they're hunched over, they can't make eye contact, uh, communication is increasingly difficult, they don't have muscle tone because they've never really played sports or done labor, the will forces are so weak, and I often wonder if I'm not seeing that, seeing the presence of the Asuric. Mm. <clears throat> They also have a very, very intense relationship with these technologies, most especially um, digital gaming, uh, playing games on the computer and pornography. Mm. So they've been shaped by drugs, gaming, pornography, and there seems to be this loss of these human faculties. Yes, there is definitely a change going on just the last years, just the last years. Uh, and that gives possibilities of looking into the spiritual world. But as I said, it all every window is a two way. So if you use a drug under if you're strong enough, if you are aware enough, if you are sort of skilled enough, you can use a drug by looking into the spiritual world, which was done and have been done. But if you are not strong enough, then it is the other way, then you are possessed by these spirits. The same you have in alcohol, if you are strong enough, you can take a glass of wine and be a kind and, and a pleasant individual. But if you cannot, then you are possessed by these forces and you get violent or want more, or uh, then you have all the negative effects of the, of the different substances. What determines whether you're strong enough or not? Yes, in my opinion, yes. Spiritually strong. Eye strength? Yes. So what would you say about presently we have uh, a big renaissance of using psychedelics for therapeutic purposes all over the world? Mm. You know, what you ask now, uh, this is not common in Norway. And everything I talk about is what I have observed. I, I very seldom uh, talk about things out of assumption. So I actually have to observe these people, these patients. So I, I, I don't dare to say anything for certain about these things. Okay. It's just getting very big in the United States. 
Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I, have, I have to. I have to see it. <laughs> yeah. So, for a point of clarification, all human beings have Luciferic and Arimonic beings inside of them, and they afford us our uh, embodiment and our autonomy. And when we become ill, what's happening to the relationship between those two, those beings? Yeah, that is what I observed. This is <clears throat> very interesting. And I have, obs have observed this in thousands of patients. In a normal patient, they are sort of behaved arimanic elemental beings and sort of behaved luciferic elemental beings. They sort of relate to a, a, a certain rule within the body. They are necessary for our development, actually, for our physical development. But when some of them get too strong, then there will be disease. If the arimanic connected to the liver gets too strong because you damage the liver by a bad eating, for example. Or, for example, in northern Norway, if you go in the cold weather, you decrease the etheric forces of the kidney and then the luciferic element can grow stronger in relation to the kidney then it will be disease if the luciferic get too strong then you uh, get luciferic symptoms if the arimanic gets too strong then you get degenerative symptoms and one other thing that is for me the last years, 10 years, the most important is to watch the distance between these two elemental beings. In a normal person, this is about the distance. You have an area around the heart, which is free of the Luciferic, Arimanic or Asuric elemental beings. But in disease, this gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And when they touch each other, they will develop very serious diseases like cancer or, or really psychological, like psychosis or, or, or such things. So while I, for many years, were treating these elemental beings to sort of push them back, causing uh, often a translocation of these beings to other persons or animals. Then I started a few, a few years ago, well, five years ago, I guess, to not treat the disease at all. I treat it only, I strengthen only the distance between them. And that gave uh, uh, very good results. There were many, um, many uh, pros about this. You didn't actually have to make a diagnosis. You didn't have to consider the symptoms. You could only concentrate on the middle between them and strengthen it. And this middle, this, um, this uh, treating the middle, uh, I was inspired by both Judith von Halle and Jules Steiner to find and treat because in the middle between the Luciferic elemental and the Arimanic mental, there is a healing force. And that is the most important. And if you strengthen this healing force between them, they are not translocated. They are transformed. And I have treated now hundreds or thousands of patients and animals with only enlarging this middle area. That is both with 
uh, alcoholics, drug addicts, all kinds of diseases in humans and in animals. Mm. For example, I did an investigation up in Iceland where I had a group of horses and I had, uh, let's say, 15 veterinarians there. And I asked them, make your diagnosis. They used really their skills to make diagnosis with the horses. And there were acupuncturists, osteopaths, homeopaths, every, everyone was also a veterinarian. So after they had done their investigations for let's say 45 minutes, and I went away then, so I didn't, didn't know any diagnosis. I came back without investigating the horses. I treated only the middle point. And after half an hour, 90% of all the symptoms were gone in all the horses. And that is what I call the treating the middle. And I have been calling this middle the Christ point because Christ was in the middle of the two uh, criminals on the on Golgotha. And many have reacted on that don't, because Christ for many is today almost a taboo word. Yes. So if several colleagues have said, don't call it the Christ point because then you push away all the Buddhists or the whatever, all the atheists and agnostics. <laughs> and I said, well, yes, I can call it the middle point. And with some colleagues in, in upstate New York, I agreed to call it the C point. <clears throat> the A point was the excess, the Luciferic. The B point was the aromatic, and the C point was the middle. And luckily, the C was well, the same as in Christ. So I said, okay, let's call it the C point. Yeah. Um, so, did you come to that insight through uh, reading the fifth gospel? No, I, no. I had been watching for years that when one treats diseases in homeopathy, acupuncture, and so on, you just push the disease away. You translocate it. And I had a dusky discussion also with the doctors from Dornach. And they say, yes, it's true, but we cannot talk about it because we don't know how to do it. Mm. So we keep it quiet. And I was searching and searching how to treat without translocating. And at the end, I thought I will ask Judith von Halle because she is the most initiated I know. And you could maybe tell afterwards who she is. Yeah. Uh, if you, yeah, you can. Good, and uh, she wouldn't answer me. So I tried for one year to uh, ask her. And then I got the answer from her. And I heard later that how she answered people now is through her lectures. She okay. don't do it directly. So I had asked her, I even went down there, knocked on her door and was refused. Wow. And then one, afternoon or one evening a colleague of mine from who lives in Potsdam he's a very clairvoyant uh, veterinarian she called me just called me I haven't talked with her for two years and said Are, she said I was on a lecture with Judith von Halle last night and she talked about how to treat without translocating and I said wow Tell me. And, and, and what she said was actually um, uh, difficult because she said, you have to treat with Christ consciousness. <clears throat> and I then felt that I was not any further because what, how do you treat with Christ consciousness? And I was thinking about this for a half a year. And then I realized Okay, what does Christ say? Where two or three are gathered, I am 
in the middle. He was always in the middle. He was always in the middle. Even on Golgotha, he was in the middle. Yeah. And then I realized that was a sort of intuition. I will treat the middle. And I started to treat the middle and um, <clears throat> the results were very good. The results on the disease were not better than other methods. Actually, the opposite, because it took a longer time. To transform takes much more time than to trans just to translocate. Oh. So when, uh, but this method transform the disease. So it's a moral treatment. And when colleagues say, oh, I found a new machine or a new laser, it is so effective. Just at 10 minutes and the pain is gone. Yeah, it is gone. But where has it gone? No. That is so important to think about. The effectiveness is not the measure. It is how it is. Where does it go? Yeah. So when you say that you're treating, we're talk, let's talk about humans. Are you using techniques that you've acquired through your years of homeopathy and acupuncture, or are you working more spiritually, energetically? Uh, both. Both. You can use acupuncture, and you, but the point is, you must not treat the disease because the disease is either the strengthened luciferic force or the strengthened aromatic force or the strengthened azuric force. That is the disease. That is what we see. That is what we feel. That is what we live with. <clears throat> if you treat the disease that it's, you go directly to these forces or entities, then they just disappear. And you think, oh, I'm a really good doctor. The, dis the disease disappeared. Yes. But that is a translocation. But if you go in the middle, then you start a transformation. That takes a little longer time. And the interesting thing is, and I, I, of course, I do not tell my patients this. I just, they come to me and I just treat. And they are happy. I don't go into these things. <laughs> but interesting, of course not. I cannot explain these things. But the interesting thing is before, quite many said, oh, now the pain is gone. Oh, now the disease is gone or something. And now today they say more and more, oh, now it is changed. They use the word change much more than before when they use the word gone. And they are happy. And they say, I feel changed. I feel like these things. And that is what Judith von Halle meant by the Christ consciousness, the Christ force, which is then strengthened. And this distance between the two uh, entities is enlarged and become vibrant, become uh, moving. While before it was stagnant, cold, and small, it becomes uh, very much like when you see uh, flowering in the spring, it becomes sort of like spring. Yeah. Mm. And I'm also, if you treat directly and just let the disease go away, it comes back with the same symptoms or with other symptoms. But if you transform, it doesn't come back because then there is no open space to come back into. Is this space purely etheric or is it also relate to the physical organ of the heart? It is um, definitely if this space can be in the etheric body or in the astral body or in the eye. Yeah, yeah. Or probably also in the physical, but not in the material. So um, 
So this uh, can be in different layers of the of the organism or the entity. So this is one of those words that I'll be off putting to some people, but when you are transforming the the disease or the entities, are you in some sense redeeming them or, or freeing them? I think so. No, no, not redeeming or freeing. I am putting the, them back into where they have their work. They have their task in this world. They have their work. They have to work with us. They are connected to us. They are the foundation, actually all physical uh, life. So I, but they have become too strong. It's like you have a, a, a school, a bully, you know, he has got too strong, you know, he can beat up everybody and then he becomes a bully because he gets too much power. All power corrupts. Or if the president gets too much power, he misuses it. That was said by intent. Um, then if you take the power away, then they suddenly realize, okay, I am a human being too. Yeah. And then they behave properly. That is what I do actually. I don't redeem anything. I just uh, put them in their place by the help of the Christ force or Christ consciousness. And how long ago was it that you found out about the Von, Von Hall lecture? Oh, six, seven. I'm not really good at that, but something like six, seven, eight years ago. So I would imagine it changed everything for you. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I do not treat anything the same way anymore. Yeah. So in your, in your writings, you say that you worked this way for a period of time, and then you saw that you were getting results were diminishing. And then you started working in groups. Yeah. Um, and that there was more power in the group. And yes. it, you relate it to the gospel saying, where two or three are gathered in my name. Yes. Two. Yes. Have you continued working along those lines? Yes. And I have, uh, I am working with. Um, different versions of all of this you see i found out at the first time and this is not uh, i have never told anybody about this what i now say so this is not written not lectured but i'm working with it and you see the first time I experienced the effect of a group was upstate New York when I treated a group uh, from their middle point. Every single person I treated from the middle point and then they were sitting in this or lying in this room. And then I saw this group effect was very special and stronger. But then now lately, and then I treated everybody in the group but lately i have started to treat the group not in the, the individuals of the group but the group and that gives actually a fundamentally a qualitative other spiritual result than treating every single because if you treat every single in the group you activate the etheric and the astral forces. That is what I've just been, uh, this is not theory, this is just observations. But if you treat the middle in the group, then you activate the spiritual forces. And that is quite fascinating because when you activate the etheric and, and, uh, uh, and, um, and, um, uh, Astral. Astral forces, 
then you start a circulation in the group. You start to circulate sort of the energies or what you call, but if you treat the middle of the group and you uh, activate the spiritual, then the whole, it is sort of like the group is transformed into a, a star with really? radi radiation, not circulatory, but radiative, radi not radioactive, but radiative. I yeah. don't know what you say it in uh, American. Does it matter whether the patient has a prior relationship to the Christ? Well, it worked very well with the horses. Mm -hmm. Then you can ask, maybe the horses have a relationship with Christ, I don't know. No, I don't think so, actually. This is both for Jews and heathens, as Christ said, I'm for all. Jew I, I, don't, I don't think you have to have that. So, um, I don't want to keep you too long, but in, in no the problem. event... I'm so happy to talk with you about these things. Well, thank you. It's really important. I, I value your work. Um, in, in, the, in America, in the world of psychiatry, in the world of treating addiction, they conceive of addiction in purely biological terms. It's, they say it's a disease. And then they, of course, try to treat the disease with pharmaceuticals. And I sometimes wonder if imagining it in such an arimonic way actually strengthens the arimonic forces. Does that, does that sound reasonable? That if we imagine a disease in a purely biological material way, that the arimonic actually gets stronger. I have to watch the sing single patient. Yeah. So everything is based on your observation of the patient. Yes. Okay. Everything I say and write about is my observation or experience and is usually based on hundreds of patients before I say something. Okay. Okay, I good. am uh, very strict about being uh, that way. I remember a lecture. I heard an American say, it is like this and this. And I went up to him afterwards and said, how many patients have you treated that way? And he said, uh, three. <laughs> And there was a German day after, he said, it might be like this or this. And then I asked him, how many patients have you treated? Oh, 650. Mm. There is, in my opinion, a tendency from Americans to be very sure based on a very few number. And I am much more German in my science. <laughs> So I, I will not say, I must observe. And uh, I have, uh, when I was living up north, I was actually the neighbor of a psychiatric hospital who had quite many uh, drug addicts who had gone into psychosis. And one of my, uh, and I rented out a room at that time and it showed that the guy who rented this room he was one of the worst criminals of Norway and a drug addict. And we became friends. And several of his friends came to me because they waited for place in the psychiatric hospital because they were quite out in psychosis and they were on medication. And I treated the middle. And they said afterwards, we didn't have to go to, psych to, to the hospital. So that is the only thing I can say in relation to that. And were they but able to come off of the medications? I know they just said to me afterwards, we didn't have to go to the hospital. But I, I must uh, observe more thoroughly how this medication works. I can 
see, as I told you, I have a certain gift of clairvoyance. So I can see the strength of the Luciferic and Aramanic entities. Or if it is translocated and so on. So I, I, I must uh, have patients and then watch them when they take the medication or take medication for a week or two weeks and then see afterwards, for example. Because you have to see them before and after also because they could have had such and such Arimanic Luciferic constellation also before they took. So I had to see what happens during the intake of the medication uh, just before and after and also during a few weeks or maybe months. Do you offer uh, methods for your patients to strengthen the midpoint by themselves? on their own? No, not actually. When I activate the middle, I start a process. And they are, and if they come to me, they are aware of that I start processes and they are very aware of it. So they sort of become aware what's happening and they follow it, but I do not so in that way, I say, you must now follow what happens and you must tell me and then we can come to certain uh, exercises or understandings. But it is more based on them uh, following a process than actually pressing it, they more follow it. And so in following the process, they may indeed learn yes. how to work with it. Oh, yes. That, and that is so, I see that almost in everybody. They say that now I understand this and oh, now I uh, can do this or now I, they, they, in that this is not a forced treatment, they come voluntarily. So they want to follow it. So. Soto, it's like you go through uh, the forest, like say you have the addiction or the disease or whatever as a dark forest. And I, I, I see there is a path in the middle because when you go to the left, you get lost. If you go to the right, you get lost. If you go in the middle, so I say go there and I let them go there. And then they have to watch, okay, there's a tree. Oh, oops, there's a wolf. And then I come back and I talk about the tree and the wolf and then we do a little and I talk with them about it and then they go. So I don't give them actually exercises. I, I more support their way through this forest on this little path that is winding. It is not a straight path. So you never know what, and everybody have a different forest to go through. Yeah. So your work, it's, it's making, I know it's making a impact in the anthroposophical world. Is it being noticed outside of the anthroposophical world? Yes, it actually is. I was, there is um, <clears throat> uh, the, the uh, head organization of all alternative therapies in Norway, that is uh, one organization that gathers everybody, they have asked me to talk about it. But you see, the problem is, and not only for the acupuncturists or the craniosacral therapists or the anthroposophic doctors or whatever, the problem is that treating the middle takes some sort of power from the teachers. Ah, <laughs> yeah. Because you don't make a diagnosis. You don't care about the symptoms. You only care about the middle or the Christ force. It's like a course for priests, you know, it's not for doctors. And uh, when I, some years ago, when I discovered this method, I 
invited myself to the all German Congress of Craniosacral Therapists. And I said, I want to make a talk and I pay my own way. So <laughs> they said, okay, <laughs> yes, they want that. <laughs> and I talked about it and then I had um, a patient there and I asked them, the leader of the organization, it is a very clever woman, very sensitive, uh, an Austrian doctor, to, um, to do the treatment under my supervision. And we had this patient and I said, okay, find the excess first. Yes, the excess is here. That is the luciferic. Then find the deficiency. Yeah, the deficiency is here. That is the aromatic. So I said, Okay, where is the middle? The middle is there, yes? And I said, then treat the middle. And then she looked at me a little bewildered and said, I cannot, there's nothing wrong there. I cannot treat something that is not wrong. And I said, yes, do it there, but I cannot treat it. Okay, consider it as you activate the middle. And then she did, she activated the middle between the two and then after, yeah half a minute, she almost screamed and said, oh, it's gone. All the excess and deficiency is gone. And the patient was much better. And then I thought that, wow, now I did a very good demonstration. Now I will be invited next year. <laughs> Nothing more. I was not invited. Because those who have thick books about osteopathic techniques, or, or homeopathic repertorium or acupuncture techniques, you know, thick books, and they are very skilled uh, teachers, they lose all their curriculum, all their power. It's like the Pharisees and Christ, actually. The Pharisees knew all the laws, the Moses law, and Jesus said, well, law thy neighbor, that's all. And they crucified him, you know? It was so simple. It was too simple. Yeah. <clears throat> so I feel a little, not, not by any matter, any comparison, but I feel a little like that. I do it too simple. And I said, this is too simple. Everybody can learn it. Yeah, I said, why not? But then the schools and the teachers, I don't want this actually. Yeah, so interesting. Do you relate what has happened to you at all to what Steiner calls the reappearance of Christ in the etheric? This is sort of the same, yes, sort of the same. It is an appearance of the Christ force or activity in the middle of the etheric, in the heart area. So, uh, yes, and I'm not sure this could have been possible uh, a hundred years ago. Maybe this was to go in the middle. Maybe it is only possible today. Because of the time after 1933 and the Christ appearance in the etheric, Maybe it is. I, I do not know. I should have liked to go back in to the 1870 and see if it could have worked on it. Maybe not. That's quite interesting. I haven't thought that much about that. Thank you for... <laughs> but I'm very careful about saying okay you activate christ there you know it's a little blasphemic so i, I just say you have to activate the, the middle between the lucifer and Arman, which is related to the christ force or the christ mentality i, I try to say it that way that last question has your work aroused interest in the christian community amongst the priesthood in Oslo, yes. Any other Christian groups? You know, I not that I know. Yeah. 
Not surprised. Yeah. No. <laughs> well, you have been very generous with your time, and I think that uh, our audience is going to be fascinated with this. So I really am I'm very happy to meet you and, and thank you. And I must add that it is actually not that difficult to learn this method. And I have taught this method to some hundred practitioners and they have ast astonishing results. So um, I would, I would uh, be happy to teach it more because I think this is very important. Well, what if you are not an, an acupuncturist or doesn't you, matter. You could teach it to a lay person. It has nothing to do with acupuncture. It has nothing to do with homeopathy. It has nothing to do with medicine. It has to do with activating this force that is related to the middle, which in my opinion is the Christ force, but you might call it the sea force or the religious force or the spiritual force or <laughs> somebody said can be called it the Buddha force. And I said, I don't actually agree, I said, but if you insist, okay. Yeah, it doesn't change the force, what you call no. it. No, no. Well, I appreciate that. I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to take you up on your offer. <laughs> well, once again, thank you so much. Thank you for asking. <laughs>